In this video, I'm going to solve this question. Have you ever been frustrated because you could not get a container of some sort to release the last bit of its contents? This article reported on an investigation of this issue for various consumer products. Suppose 5 6 ounce tubes of toothpaste of a particular brand are randomly selected and squeezed until no more toothpaste will come out. Then each tube is cut open and the amount remaining is weighed, resulting in the following data. So this is the data that we are given. Does it appear that the true average amount left is less than 10% of the advertised net contents? And in part A, we have to state any assumptions necessary for testing the appropriate hypothesis. So first of all, let's list down all the information that is given in the question. So we are given that n is equal to 5 because we have taken 5 tubes of toothpaste and we are also given this data. So our data is this 0 0.53, 0 0.50 and 0 0.37. And using this data, we can find the value of sample mean, which I'm denoting by x bar and the value of sample standard deviation, which I am denoting by S. And this is the information that is given to us in the equation. In part A, we have been asked if there are any assumptions necessary for testing the appropriate hypothesis. Note that this sample is not a large sample. N is equal to 5 in this case, and we are not given the population standard deviation. What we have in this question is sample standard deviation that we can find from this data. So in this case, we cannot use Z test to test the hypothesis. So we cannot use this test. Now the other option is to use the T test to test the hypothesis that is given in the question. But to be able to use T test, we need to say something about the population from which the sample is taken. So to be able to use T test, we need to make an assumption that the population from which we have taken this sample so the population is normally distributed. Only then we can use t-test to test this hypothesis. So this is the assumption that is necessary for testing the appropriate hypothesis. So this is all about part A. Let's move to part B. In part B, we have to carry out a test of the appropriate hypothesis using a significance level of 0 0.05. So this is our part B. And we are given that alpha, which is the level of significance, is 0 0.05 and n is equal to 5. Note that we have to test this. So does it appear that the true average amount left is less than 10% of the advertised net contents? So this is what we have to test, mu less than 10, where mu is the population average. And the counterclaim of this would be mu greater than equal to 10. So this is your null hypothesis because this claim has the equal to sign. And this is your alternate hypothesis. So your null hypothesis is that mu is greater than equal to 10. And your alternate hypothesis is that mu is less than 10. And note that this is 10%. Okay, we are given percent here. Now, before we test the hypothesis, we have to make one small change in the way the data has been given. So note that this data that is given to us is in ounces and the hypothesis that we are testing here is in percent. So this is 10%. So first, let's convert the data that has been given to us in percentage terms. So we are given that we have 0 0.53 here. 0 0.65, 0 0.46, 0 0.50 and 0 0.37. And it's given in the question that a tube has 6 ounce of toothpaste. So that means to calculate the percent of toothpaste left, we have to divide this by 6 and then we have to multiply it by 100 because we are calculating percentages here. And this will be equal to 8.83%. Similarly, we can do it here. So this is equal to 0 0.65 divided by 6 multiplied by 100. And this will be equal to 10.83%. In this case, we will have 7.67%. Here, 
here we will have 8.33% and in this last case we will have 6.17%. So now we have converted our data in percentage terms and now we can use this data to calculate the sample mean and the sample standard deviation because we need these two values to test the hypothesis. So first of all let's calculate the sample mean. So we can write that sample mean is equal to x bar and x bar is equal to x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 plus x5 divided by 5 where x1 is 8.83, x2 is 10.83, x3 is 7.67 and so on. So this is equal to 8.83 plus 10.83 plus 7.67 plus 8.33 plus 6.17 divided by 5 and this is equal to 8.366. So the sample mean is equal to 8.366. Similarly, let's now calculate the sample standard deviation. We are using S to denote the sample standard deviation. So sample standard deviation is equal to under root of summation xi minus x bar whole square divided by n minus 1. And we are given that n is equal to 5. We have calculated the value of x bar and the value of x i's we already know. So we can solve this and solving this we will get that the sample standard deviation is equal to 1.703. So now we know the sample standard deviation which is 1.703. We know the sample mean which is 8.366. And we know that we have to use t-test to test the hypothesis. So now this is the final information that we have. Our null hypothesis is this. Our alternate hypothesis is mu less than 10. n is equal to 5. Sample standard deviation is equal to 1.703. And sample mean is equal to 8.366. As you can see in alternate hypothesis, we have a less than sign here. So that means this is a case of left tail test. So this is a left tailed test. Now let us draw a t distribution to see where does the rejection region lie. We know that t distribution is symmetric and bell shaped. So let's say this is how the t distribution looks like. And uh, we are given that alpha is equal to 0 0.05 and this is a left tail test. So that means your rejection region will be somewhere here. This is your alpha is equal to 0 0.05. And this value is t critical. So this is the critical value of t. And we can find this value of t using the t table. So we are given that n is equal to 5. So that means the degrees of freedom is equal to n minus 1. So that means the degrees of freedom is equal to 4. You can find the value of t critical using the t table. So in the t table you have to look for a value such that alpha is equal to 0 0.05 and degree of freedom is 4. I'm writing the answer here. So you will find that t critical is equal to minus 2.132. Now let's calculate t calculated. So t calculated is equal to, this is our test statistic. So this is equal to x bar minus mu naught divided by s divided by root n. And this is under the assumption that null hypothesis is true. We know that x bar is equal to 8.366. This is the value that we calculated. Under the assumption that null hypothesis is true, mu naught is equal to 10. And the standard deviation is 1.703 divided by under root of 5. Solving this, we get minus 2.146. And if t critical is minus 2.132, so we are given that this value here is minus 2.132 and this value is minus 2.146. So minus 2.146 will lie somewhere to the left of minus 2.132. So say it will be somewhere here. So that means in this case we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the population mean is less than 10%. So the conclusion is reject the null hypothesis. So reject H0 at alpha is equal to 5%. So this is all about the first part of part B. Now the second part says that would your conclusion change if a significance level of 1% had been used. So let's see what will happen in this case. So in this case, 
we are given that alpha is equal to 0 0.01. Well, rest of the values remain same. So n is equal to 5, x bar is equal to 8.366. T calculated, which is our T statistic. This is equal to minus 2.146. And the sample standard deviation is equal to 1.703. So because we are changing the value of alpha, only the T critical value will change. So now we have to find the T critical, which is the critical value of T, such that alpha is equal to 0 0.01 and degrees of freedom. So degrees of freedom is equal to 4. Well, you can find this value using the T table and you will find that this value is minus 3.747. So let's draw a graph to see this. So say this is how your T distribution looks like and here is your rejection region because this is a left tail test. So here we have alpha is equal to 0 0.01 and T critical is minus 3.747 and T calculated is minus 2.146. So your T calculated lies somewhere here. It's minus 2.146. So your T calculated does not lie in the rejection region. So in this case, we do not reject the null hypothesis. So we do not reject the null hypothesis at alpha is equal to 0 0.01. So that means there is not sufficient evidence to conclude that the population mean is less than 10%. Now let's move to part C. Describe in context type 1 and type 2 errors and say which error might have been made in reaching our conclusion. So to start with, this was our null hypothesis. And this was our alternate hypothesis. Now type 1 error is equal to, so type 1 error is equal to the probability that we reject the null hypothesis given that the null hypothesis is true. So that means the type 1 error would be to say that mu is less than 10. So it would be to say that mu is less than 10 when in actual mu is greater than or equal to 10. So that means the type 1 error is when we conclude that less than 10% is left when in actual more than 10% is left. Similarly, let's see what is type 2 error in this case. So we know that type 2 error is equal to the probability that we do not reject the null hypothesis given that alternate hypothesis is true or given that the null hypothesis is false. So that means in this case we will say that mu is greater than or equal to 10 when in actual mu is less than 10. So that means the type 2 error occurs when we conclude that the percentage of toothpaste left is greater than or equal to 10% when in actual it is less than 10%. And now we have to say which error might have been made in reaching a conclusion. So now because at the significance level of 0 0.05 we rejected the null hypothesis. So in this case we might have made a type 1 error and when the level of significance was equal to 0 0.01 we did not reject the null hypothesis. So do not reject the null hypothesis. This was our conclusion. So in this case, we might have made a type 2 error. And this is all about part C. And this is all for this question.